So, so now reconstruction. Yes. Okay, so uh, Suzanne uh, is going to be talking about reconstruction. Um, this, this is sort of a compile, compiled um, uh, presentation that she's taken a lot of our own videos and we've, uh, we've given her to, uh, to present them. Thank you. So I will focus on the reconstruction of the gastrectomy, the anastomosis. And there are several possible uh, anastomosis after a gastrectomy and that's, that depends partially on the resection you perform. So do you perform a total or a subtotal gastrectomy? That is, the anastomosis will, of course, be different. And in the Dutch guideline, you, can, you are allowed to perform a subtotal gastrectomy if you can reach a proximal margin of more than six centimeters. Then, of course, you would perform a gastrojejunostomy, and uh, usually in combination with a Roux-en-Y. If you can't reach uh, six centimeters, and it, is, it will be possible to perform a more extended resection, you need to perform a frozen section. And in all other cases, a total gastrectomy will be performed. And then with the reconstruction of a esophageal jejunostomy with a Roux and Y enteroenterostomy. In our guideline, there's uh, no description of a distal gastrectomy with a B1 or a B2 reconstruction. But of course, there are indications uh, for uh, uh, less advanced cancers where you can perform these resections and reconstructions. And also in our, in our guideline, there's no discrimination in the proximal margin between a diffuse or a intestinal anocarcinoma, uh, as in, is in some other countries like in Japan or in uh, Germany. So different anastomo uh, anastomotic techniques exist. For the esophageal jejunostomy, you can perform an uh, end-to-side or side-to-side -side anastomosis. For the gastrojejunostomy, usually a side-side anastomosis will be performed. Lorenzo will tell something about uh, extracorporeal anastomosis, with, which can be performed both after a subtotal or total gastrectomy, and um, in most cases, a Ruana enteroenterostomy will be performed after uh, a resection instead of a B2. So, first about the uh, endocyte esophageal jejunostomy. This is uh, especially suitable for the higher anastomosis in the thorax if you need to dissect uh, or resect part of the esophagus. You can either use the orville, which is inserted through the mouth on a gastric tube, or put the anvil in, in the esophageal stump and uh, fixate it with a purse string suture. And this is accompanied by a Roux and Y. This is the first video. Here we, the distal esophagus is uh, dissected free and stapled with a linear stapler. The orville is inserted through the mouse. And uh, the, on the tip of the gastric tube, it's with diathermia, it, uh, the esophagus is opened and pulled into the abdomen until the un anvil is reached. Then in the meantime, the, the small bowel is prepared and the stapler is inserted. The stapler parts are aligned and closed and fired. And then with the linear stapler, the small bowel is closed. And the, the there should be enough space between the, the small bowel closure and the circular stapler line so that this part will not become ischemic. And it's very important to have a tension-free uh, anastomosis here and without rotation. Oh, sorry. The second video is from Miguel. Maybe you can uh, comment some, give some comments on it. Oh, this in the this is for a, a distal gastrectomy. So you have the stump of the stomach. No, this is the total. No, the total, this. Uh, this, this one, total. Oh, the total, yeah. Sorry, I, I thought it was the subtotal, but I prefer to, to pass the, the jejunal loop, a retrocolic, like you here see. You open the, the loop of the jejunum. You introduce laparoscopically the, the stapler, the circular stapler. You accomplish one with other, and you close the device, and you fire it. Okay? And thereafter, you have to resect, of course, the lateral loop where the circular stapler has been introduced. Now, Miguel, you're passing this through. You said the left lower quadrant. Yeah. You, you yeah. enlarge that, and uh, and you're able to maintain a new aperitoneum because yeah. uh, it's quite a small incision. I prefer to use the same incision, lateral left, 
in order to introduce the stapler, I think it's a good direction, and uh, the incision serves also for the retrieval of the specimen, yeah. And here you perform the jejun or unostomy using the linear stapler, like you here see, and thereafter, the, the question is how long will be the rule Y, and uh, we prefer at least 40 centimeters uh, in order to avoid any biliary reflux. We close the defect using the V-lock, like you here see, and I am very happy with this uh, material in order to close these defects. In one layer, yeah. Suzanne, can, can I ask you a question? Uh, what about the instance of the uh, stenosis uh, stricture uh, after the use of the uh, VLOC, uh, sorry, uh, OVL? Yeah. Uh, we sometimes experience uh, yeah, that's possibility true. Yeah. structure. I think it's uh, maybe less than 5%. 5%. Five, five do you have any but we do you know, see tips it. or special technique to prevent the uh, postoperative stricture? In no, case with, no. uh, it's the staple size is uh, always the same, so 25. it's 25. Okay. And um, yeah, we don't devascularize the, is the distal esophagus very far, but you, of course you need to, to uh, dissect it free a little bit, but uh, we don't take too much vessels down of the distal esophagus. And yeah, for the rest, I don't believe that a specific other uh, possible prevention method. So, yeah. Which kind of orbital do you use? The because you, you have several sizes. Yeah, the orbital is always the 25. 25. Yeah. I think yeah. it's very important. Yeah. In my, but in if my you practice, use it yeah. uh, with a purse string suture, you have also 29. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd use that for esophageal uh, cancer reconstruction, uh, not for this. Yeah. Yeah. We have a question from the floor here. from New York. Um, those two videos were very different. Um, one, you had it right way. The second video, the candy cane or the opening was to the patient's right. And the first video, the candy cane or the, uh, vi the mesentery was to the patient's left. And uh, although you do it for cancer, we do it for obesity. And our patients live 20 years. And when you put it to the wrong way around, you get a lot more internal hernias and you've twisted your mesentery down below. So the opening, the blind end of the orbo, which is where you put the orbo in, and I've done maybe 3,000 of those anastomosis, you need to keep it to the patient's right. And the reason I know that is for the first 500, I did it to the patient's left. So you twist your mesentery. You need to have the opening on your bowel when you're doing the anastomosis to the patient's left side, as in the second video, because it's very different from the first video. Yeah, because th there are different authors and different surgeons. The, uh, but said, the mesentery of the human body is the same. I prefer to put uh, the loop looking to the left side of the patient exactly. always. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and I agree with you. That, but the other video, I don't know where it comes from, and I'm not dissing an individual. I'm just saying I, if you're going to do this anastomosis, and again... I always look at the mesentery, and it's, I always end up that it's to the right, the opening is on the right side of yeah, the patient. But you maybe and then it's really completely, if you, I can see the last slide of the... Um. So this is very important information. Uh, do you, do you, are you aware of any publication uh, assessing this scientifically? Um, I think if... If you look at uh, the mesentery here, you see this absolutely no torsion, it's completely yeah, in the natural Yeah, because you're not seeing fashion. it down below. And I, I, and I, I guess we can't argue because we can't see the whole thing. I, I'm just saying from the person, we do gastric bypass. I mean, I do three a week or something like that. It's, you know, and then many bariatric surgeons and the candy, we actually have a name for that, that loop. It's called the candy cane. And, and we always put it to the patient's left as uh, your colleague to your left is. Um, and it doesn't did line a up that way to the right. surgery myself, actually, and I also did it like this. All right. Yeah, yeah. and we yeah. did the experience. We, so we need we yeah. need to study this scientifically because it becomes yeah. like yeah. But it, it's an important point, and uh, the literature of, and also of bariatric probably, surgery is very informative because of the large numbers. 
And it's also different probably because you perform an anticholic uh, anastomosis and this is all a retrocholic. Yes. You aware? This is a... Uh, this is uh, uh, my procedure. Uh, yeah, I, I prefer to use the uh, uh, linear stapler to perform the s or general anastomosis. At first, uh, we cut, the, we open the tip of the, you know, s stamp, uh, stamp. And, uh, you know, uh, the general and uh, s anastomosis using a linear stapler like that. Uh, there are two, two ways, I mean, uh, this type and the uh, opposite, I mean, the functional end-to-end -end style. Uh, it's, I think it depends on the surgeon's preference, but uh, I prefer this uh, portion, uh, this style, because it's also available even in the case with a high uh, anastomotic level in the metal stinum. After that, common uh, hole of the stapler should be uh, closed using hand, step, uh, hand suturing. I prefer to use a V-lock uh, after the closure of the uh, bilateral end of the common hall. I will use a V-lock to close the common hall. But uh, uh, probably Suzanne will present the functional end-to-end -end style after that, right? So uh, it's probably easier to close uh, the common hall using a linear stapler. Because uh, in this style, we have to be careful about the you know, stenosis uh, when we use a, a linear stapler. It is a little bit technically uh, difficult to do that. That's why I use a, a V-lock and a hand suturing to close the common hall. the nasogastric tube as a guide? Ah, uh, yes, just a, just a guide. So we don't uh, place the, the gastric tube after, after gastrostomy, after surgery. Just a guide uh, to insert the uh, uh, ambio of the linear stapler uh, appropriately. In order to not dissect under the plane of the mucosa? Yes, a mucosal layer, yes. And finally, uh, I prefer to fix the jejunum to the hepatoduodenal uh, ligament to prevent the twist of the jejunum mm. after gastrectomy. That's all. Yeah, there are some, uh, for the really high esophageal jejunostomy, the, this technique can be difficult and challenging because you have to work through, uh, uh, through the small hiatus into a very confined space where you have limited triangulation of your instruments and you need the long uh, length of your enteral loop, so you need to skeletonize along the arcade of the small bowel and this arcade needs to be intact. And for this high, really high anastomosis, you can actually only use the Orville or you have to do it open, even through a thoracotomy. Here you have an example of the uh, the arcade of the small bowel, which is here beautiful, intact, with a trans illumination. So you have to prepare a real long enteral loop if you want to get it really high. Here you see the, uh, with the distal esophageal resection, you see the plane over the aorta. And again, the orphal is inserted uh, through the mouth by the anesthetist. And the esophagus is opened yeah. using diathermia. Yeah. <clears throat> Susan, I, I think it's a very good tip to, to prepare the jejunal loop outside. Eh? Yeah, especially or, if you need to... Do you to think it's possible to prepare laparoscopically? No, no, I don't think so. Not no. in obese patients, it will be no. very, very di difficult to, uh, to see it. Very long, too. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Now, now, Suzanne, I think uh, most of us 
I think the, the would converge at this time point. If your margin is positive and you're going that high, I know. I mean, uh, as a uh, that's that's pretty hard for me yep. to do that in estimates. That's really remarkable to be able to do it. But uh, to pedicalize, as you mentioned, is really short and important to show how you pedicalize that jejunum. And I would have just converted for this one and gone to the left chest. Uh, you, you're Same really here. high in there. <laughs> I think the alternative would be thoracoscopic, of course. Yeah, thoracoscopic no. or it's thoracoscopic. Mark yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's so important to have a tension free uh, anastomosis and yeah. without rotation. Then the side to side is of genostomy. Actually, from here, I was already a uh, side to side um, is of genostomy. It's uh, for the lower anastomosis if it's in the intra abdominal, and in this case, you use a linear stapler and close the defect. I prefer the V log because it's very easy, and also in combination with the uh, Ruin Y. Here you see the esophageal stump, which you open with a uh, diatermia. You, you don't take off the complete staple line, just a small corner. You also open the small intestine. And you insert the stapler. And the defect is closed with the sure. V-log. Can you use also a 30 a stapler, 30 in, instead of 60? Or yeah, we, you? Uh, you, for the this, this uh, brand of stapler, you can only use one size for yeah. if you. Um, so if you choose at the beginning of the operation for this size, yeah. for the duodenum, for example, then you can't change the the length of the stapler. Suzanne, can you forward to the next video because we've seen people suturing the same thing yeah, past, we, yeah, uh, seven we, times. Yeah, we can fast forward here. Yeah. And also for the next one, maybe we can just show the alignment of the staplers and then move on because okay. we will be yeah, running a bit short of finished. time. Yeah, yes, please. This is, uh, yeah. So you can fast yeah. forward. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You have. The, so we can just show the alignment. This is a functional end-to-end. -end, not. Uh, it's a side-to-side -side anastomosis uh, where the the end of the esophagus and the end of the bowel are aligned, and the advantage is that the the the, the limiting part of the small bowel is the mesentery. It's not the the bowel itself. So you can probably come a little bit higher up with a functional end-to-end -end compared to a side-to-side -side, as shown in the previous one. And you perform it anticholic in this case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think it really makes a difference where you go anticholic, retrocholic. I think all of us go back and forth on this. Yeah. But I don't think there's any data to support one way or the other. Yeah. Might be slightly shorter way retrocholically, yeah. maybe, but. I noticed that you sutured the mucosa to make sure you're not doing a submucosal anastomosis. Uh, you made sure that you, you held on to the mucosa in the, uh, on the esophagus. And notice also the skeletalized replaced uh, left hepatic artery in view. So the end of the small bowel against the end of the esophagus. And after we staple, we can just move on, I think. And it's close with the running V-lock again. Yes. Yeah. Okay, then the gastrogegenostomy, uh, as the bariatric surgeons perform this uh, anastomosis very often, but also in gastric cancer, the, uh, uh, this is, needs to be performed and with a linear stapler and a V-lock, usually with a combination with a Roux and Y, but in selected cases, uh, you can perform a B2 uh, reconstruction. 
especially for the, if you pro, uh, leave a larger part of the stomach in the real distal uh, early cancer. But then you have to be aware of the more bile uh, reflux. So here you see a very small gastric uh, remnant. On the smaller curvature side, it's almost up to the um, esophagus. And we open the stomach at the end of the staple line. And the small, small bowel as well. And we insert a linear stapler. You always check if the, the, the staple is not too close to the to the other staple line, so that the bridge between the two staple lines is not too narrow to prevent ischemia. Now, in, here we've shown, I mean, we've shown the V-lock quite a bit, but um, uh, I think uh, you can also lift this up and use a stapler at this time yeah. point uh, uh, to close that, yeah. that, that defect between yeah. the stomach and the three, stomach. Three stay sutures and a, and a stapler is also... It's also so, possible, yeah. 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 yeah, but I like to... Uh, Suture. <laughs> Post forward this or? Yeah. yeah, would you move forward? Yes. Now, I, I don't think we have a, a, an Orville video, but I'll see an Orville is an, a, a, a possibility here as well. Sorry? An, a, an Orville is also a possibility, and, yeah, uh, true, uh, yeah, and yeah. then circular staplers are here as a possibility, but pretty much I think but most of us on the panel do said, a, Yeah, with a little bit more chance of uh, stenosis in, in, with a linear stapler, in this case you have a wider anastomosis. This is your video, Miguel. Yeah. Oh. No, that is the case of the distal gastrectomy. Uh, we prepared the jejunal loop for at least 40 centimeters. What we do is uh, we pass the jejunal loop retrocolic through the transverse mesocolon, so upstairs. And what we do is we open the jejunal loop, and as you see, we open retrogastric in the posterior wall of the stomach more or less three centimeters for the staple line yeah. in order yeah. to avoid any ischemia between the staple line and the new anastomosis. If you do this one, two centimeters, perhaps it's two less, and we do the anastomosis with the linear stapler, and we close the defect using, or in this case, uh, MPDS, but you can use the, of course, the Philoc, and we perform Finally, the jejunal jejunal anastomosis. Well, yes, we also have some comments on the extracorporal anastomosis. Yeah, I, I still do quite a bit of extracorporal, although my residents and my colleagues are trying to make me do more intracorporeal. Um, uh, uh, what I like about it is, particularly for tumors in the mid body, um, it allows you to assess grossly the margins while you're transecting them, and allows you easy revision of those margins as well. Um, can you go to the next slide? And here you can see through the accessory incision, you can do whatever the hell you want. You can do a Bill Roth 2, Bill Roth 1, or well, not Bill Roth 1, sorry, Bill, Bill Roth 2 or Ruan Y, uh, and it's very accessible. So it's nothing to, nothing to be ashamed about. You don't, you don't lose your street cred if you do an extracorporeal anastomosis. And you do this for both subtotal and total gastrectomy? Sorry? You do it for both subtotal and subtotal. And total. Total. Yeah, total's a little bit harder to do so. the final uh, presentation on there as well? We have five minutes left or three minutes left to do the last final presentation. Now, what I've decided to do with the final presentation, we, we've showed different ways of doing the, uh, the procedure. Um, what I'd like to do is just go through a few cases of how we would do the, uh, manage these patients, uh, the panel of manage these patients, uh, and um, both laparoscopically and, and otherwise. So this is a 62-year-old uh, woman. You can see there's a tumor in the, uh, uh, in the incisura. It's a T2N0. Uh, you have a lot of space uh, from the um, from the um, uh, from the EG junction. Uh, how would you manage this? A laparoscopic to uh, laparoscopic sub uh, distal gastrectomy. Distal gastrectomy. You would take station one. Yeah, sure. How far? So you you, you dissect. How much stomach are you taking out here? What's the distance from the tumor to the GE junction? GE junction. You're probably around seven, eight centimeters. It's yeah. really at well, it's pretty, pretty close. I mean, we always do intraoperative gastroscopy, yep. and we assess it, and we try to, you know, judge it. But if it's a close call, of course, I would do a total. But, okay. but, but, but I mean, lots of space here. You yeah. can see here, you got 
Yeah, miles. Yes. Suzanne? Probably. Yeah, subtotal. Subtotal gas spectrum laparoscopically. Yeah. Laparoscopically. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. 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 And, and folk would perform a phony section if you would not get a free margin of six centimeters, if you would expect it. But this seems more than six. You're going to have tons of, tons, of, tons of length there. Okay. Next patient. This is a 42-year-old gentleman who has, uh, has a hereditary gastric cancer. He's a clinical T4N2, poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma at the incisura. This is also at the incisura. Let's see, you don't got a hell of a lot of space between the, the uh, top of the tumor and the ET junction. Uh, Magnus? Until very recently, I would have done this openly because I would like to do a brisectomy. Yep. But with the new evidence that it doesn't really help with brisectomy, I think I'd do this laparoscopically, like a laparoscopic total gastrectomy with a D2. Even even with a bulky uh, N2 lymph nodes? Well, I mean, it might have to convert, but but uh, I mean, if, if you can do it well, you can, I mean, sometimes you can do it even better laparoscopically, the lymphectomy. So I'd try. Suzanne? I agree. Laparoscopic. Laparoscopic what, total? There you go. I agree, but if... Uh, if there are some difficulties during the dissection of the lymph nodes, I will convert. Yeah, yeah I might choose uh, open yeah. total gastrectomy because uh, in terms of the evidence, uh, surgical, uh, oncological evidence, we have no evidence at this moment yep. of the uh, laparoscopic surgery. That's true. Yeah, I, I, that, that last answer is the right answer, actually. Well, that's what I, we would do that as well at McGill. Um, I find that the lymph node dissection, although we showed some incredible videos uh, for bulky lymph nodes, uh, I, we still do those open. Um, next gentleman, 74-year-old, I'll start from this side, um, uh, clinical T1 N0, well differentiated adenocarcinoma, you can see it right here. Heroya, yes. how are you managing this patient? Yes, uh, we initially performed the endoscopic submucosal dissection. Yeah, and uh, after the results of the pathological diagnosis, we can uh, add the uh, laparoscopic distal gastrectomy in case with, uh, uh, you know, uh, outside of an indication of ESD. What if this is a clinical T, if, what, if, what if at the, at the end of endoscopy, endoscopic submucosal dissection, this is a uh, T1B SM1 G3 LVI negative, how are you going to manage that patient? You have an R0 section on ESD, what are you doing that for that patient? Uh, in case with uh, uh, well or moderate different other carcinoma, uh, that would be the you know within the indication of ESD. But uh, uh, G three means uh, poorly, right? Yeah, uh, that's the uh, absolute indication of the laparoscopic gastrectomy. Would you consider uh, central lymph node mapping in this patient? Uh, yes, uh, it is, uh, but uh, still not standard. So. Uh, usually, we perform the laparoscopic distal gastrectomy. Yeah, you go. And uh, what about in Amsterdam? How do you guys manage this? I think the same, because if the if the tumor grows through the submucosa, you have to perform an, uh, a gastrectomy. And if the tu the tumor is distal, yeah. you perform a distal gastrectomy with a but possibly with a D1 lymphadenectomy, D1 plus. D1 plus. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So you would, uh, you, but you would still try endoscopic first, is that right, Suzanne? Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, what about in Stockholm? Yeah, the same. We would definitely do an endoscopic resection first. I think all T1s should be endoscopically resected. You assess the specimen, and when you've assessed the specimen, you know if it's enough or if you have to proceed with, with a formal resection and lymphadenectomy. Excellent point. I mean, the one point here I want to say is that uh, uh, you really got ESDs, even if they says T1B on the EUSs, because the EUS is notoriously um, uh, um, either under and over stages, uh, uh, T, sta uh, T stage. So you, you do the endoscopic resection first and then make a decision later on. Um, uh, what about this one? Here we go. Uh, you got a tumor T2N0. It's uh, this sort of uh, it's mid body along the lesser curvature right there. Um, okay, start over here, Roya. How are you, you going to manage this patient? What operation are you going to do? Yes, uh, 72 years old. You got, yeah, you yeah. got maybe five, four or five centimeters. Oh, yes. Uh, I tried to perform the uh, subtotal gastrectomy laparoscopically, and uh, uh, according to the results of an interoperative pathological diagnosis of the proximal margin of the resected specimen, we can change to the total gastrectomy. Okay, now, well, we heard earlier about the Dutch um, uh, guidelines, and Suzanne, you are, uh, you're on the, the guideline committee. How are you going to manage this patient? You've got five centimeters of poorly differentiated clinical T2N0. Uh, since you can perform a more extended resection, I would also like Hiroya to perform a frozen section intraoperatively. But with a subtotal gastrectomy laparoscopically. Yes, yes. I, I, I will make a choice for a total gastrectomy. 
That's a good point. Yeah. I, I agree with Miguel. Uh, poorly differentiated cancers are notoriously understaged clinically. So I would suspect that this, when we have the specimen, is a much more advanced cancer than a, C, uh, than a T2N0. So I would go for a laparoscopic total. Based on location? Based on location and poor differentiation. If it was highly differentiated, I would uh, try to do a, a, a distal if possible. Yeah. And we do not know if this is a diffuse or a intestinal diffuse? type? Well, I can, okay. If it's the poorly differentiated, there may be some separating yeah. cells in there as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, is this Professor Bergman from uh, McGill University. Seventy-two is young in this. Yeah, he's young, <laughs> young for us. Yeah. <laughs> I just got called like an hour ago for an eighty-nine-year-old with esophageal cancer at one of our hospitals in Montreal. So seventy-two. That's you know, Miguel. You mentioned seventy-two. Yes. Uh, if the patient is very young and uh, strong, uh, we choose uh, total gastrectomy, but uh, in case with uh, 75 or 80 or something uh, older generation, we try to uh, preserve, uh, uh, you know, at least a small stomach at first. But uh, uh, in case with a positive uh, pathology, uh, we have to do a total gastrectomy. Okay, next, uh, with one, one, one more two cases left. 82-year-old uh, uh, clinical uh, T3N0 comes in vomiting to the emergency room. Endoscopy reveals a very small tumor at the prepyloric area, but still a clinical T3N0. It's well differentiated. It has gastric outlet obstruction. How are you manage this, uh, um, uh, Magnus? Uh, lap distal gastrectomy without any preoperative chemo in this old okay. lady with the gastric outlet obstruction. I would uh, admit the patient to give a gastric tube and feed him for a week or two and then perform a laparoscopic distal gastrectomy laparoscopic. without any adjuvant Subtotal. therapy. How much stomach are you taking out? A lot of stomach in there. You got lots of margins. <laughs> you, you're doing the same thing. How much, uh, how much of that stomach are you taking out? I would perform subtotal. Massive, so, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And, uh, Miguel? I do. I will do the same with uh, pos possible deconversion because the tumor is big and uh, in a very difficult location. So I start with laparoscopy. If I can do the, the resection and the dissection very uh, good and very properly, I will continue with the laparoscopy. Otherwise, I convert. Doroya, well, how you manage this lady uh, comes to you in your new hospital at Hamamatsu? Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the pr same opinion as uh, Miguel, and uh, you know, uh, it's a very difficult case. But uh, uh, I, uh, anyway, I, uh, I observed uh, laparoscopically and I decided. Yeah. Uh, but you see the tumor there on the on, uh, on the lesser curvature, right? Eh? Yeah. It, it, this lesser patient we managed to open. Uh, I have tried doing laparoscopic um, subtotals when they have massive stomachs like that. I, it's just, it's, it's humongous. You can fit a person into the stomach. I, I, did we do those open. Uh, another point here that, 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 uh, that I found is important, that we t uh, I think Dr. Bergman mentioned the, uh, the patients who have gastric stasis afterwards. These are the ones going to get it. So it's yeah. important to take, even though you have, your margins are going to be humongous, you really want to keep that stomach small, the stomach remnant small, or else it's just going to just dilate. That, that, those, uh, uh, th that muscle is just so stretched out, it will not empty. And we've had to convert a couple after, uh, to totals afterwards because they just won't empty. Uh, and that's something to cons consider for cascal obstruction. I think I have one last one. Okay. T3 and 0, well differentiated. Uh, you have a ton of space between the, the bottom. Uh, uh, you can see right at the EG junction. Uh, you have maybe six centimeters to the incisura, no, probably seven centimeters to the incisura, well-differentiated adenocarcinoma, N0, in a 78-year-old gentleman. Magnus, what are you doing with this gentleman? I would do a laparoscopic total gastrectomy. I wouldn't do a, a, a proximal gastrectomy because we have very little experience and there's a massive reflux problem. I know the Japanese have techniques to yeah. handle that. Okay. Heroya, he, he, he put you on the spot there. How are you going to manage this patient? Uh. <laughs> it's uh, well differentiated. You have well de de delineated mark, uh, uh, margins. It looks like it's a lot of sort of endophytic, big ulcer. Yes, but I choose uh, laparoscopic total gastrectomy. Uh, but uh, some surgeon still perform the open total gastrectomy. And uh, probably some mm, small number of surgeons perform the proximal gastrectomy. Yep. Yeah. But it well, depends on the surgeon. Okay, Miguel, 
And for me, it, it total laparoscopic. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what about Sam? Same. What if this was half the size? Would anyone do a proximal laparoscopic, proximal gastrectomy? No. Using the same no. anastomotic techniques. Anyone in the, in the, in the audience? Well, we published on this, so we have to. <laughs> we, we do quite a bit of our proximal gastrectomies um, uh, and found the reflux uh, data is 19, you know, pre-PPI uh, proton pump inhibitors yeah. and able to manage it. So we do a lot of proximal gastrectomies for tumors, small tumors, but they're just like this. I think that's it. Oh, oh, oh this is the last one. 55-year-old guy. Uh, T4N0, poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. This is what it looks like. It took a while to get, a, get the diagnosis. He underwent new adjuvant therapy. This is what the, someone show me the next, uh, and that's what the CT scan looks like uh, prior to treatment. Um, how are you managing this? Arroyo. Yes. Uh, Forget about the adjuvant therapy surgically. I Line think I should, I should have uh, uh, total, open total gastrectomy. Open total, okay, yeah, so we're, we're abandoning all that. Okay, what about you, uh, um, uh, Magnus? Open total with bursectomy. <laughs> That's it, after with all that. <laughs> Endomet <laughs> endometectomy. Yeah. Miguel? I think that we'll start with the laparoscop laparoscopy, and if I see that uh, that is not to mobilize, and et cetera, et cetera, I convert. Yeah. Yeah. Laparoscopic total gastrectomy. Yeah, what I, what I found difficult with the laryngitis patients is that it's really hard to m push the stomach around without banging it up. Uh, and so uh, we, we would do that open, but I, I recognize that. Do you have a better way to retract it? I find it so difficult to move that stomach. It really is like a rock uh, right here. Well, I think that concludes our, our session. Um, I'd like to thank uh, all our panelists uh, for, for doing an incredible job um, uh, putting together the videos. Um, uh, unfortunately, we have completely run over time, so we won't be able to take any questions. We'd be more than happy to ask, uh, um, to, uh, you're more than happy, you're more than welcome to ask them afterwards to, uh, to the individual panelists. Again, thank you very much, uh, as well as all the audience. Thank you.